that you probably expected me to say the favorite word, hotel. I don't say it because I have more people to give recognition to than hotep, and I would prefer to say good afternoon women. Uh, the subject matter is rather important, and I think it's the most important subject that I ever could speak on, and that would be uh, the African mother. I say that because for the African there would be no one if it were not for the African mother. That brings the question among African men particularly, how could the African mother be such without the African father? If you are a Christian, if you are a Christian, you wouldn't ask the question because you presume it in terms of Mary, and she was supposed to have been pregnant without a man. So if you can be a Christian, then you un you understand the proposition, and you have lived it. At least you pretend to by stating that the question of Mary and the question of Christianity is correct. I do not mean it in that context. I said that the African mother is the first human to have had a child, whether she get it from the father. Because since fathers don't have children, not that I know of, and I don't think any one of you presumptuous enough to say that you know a man who gave birth to a child. And that's even if you assume there was a person called Adam. And if Adam gave birth to a child, his rectum must have been seriously damaged. <laughs> and I don't think that you're willing to produce a seriously damaged rectum from anybody to see or deal with it historically. So considering those facts, I think you will agree that the first person to give birth to a child has been a woman, whether or not it's been the Immaculate Conception, and I take issue with that, unless you're willing to say fate, uh, not fact. And fate could be <laughs> misunderstood for fact. I think that the issue that we are having is the conception of words, the meaning of words. We believe in a lot of things that we dare not try to show anyone. And I think when we're talking about religion and in the house of religion, I know I wouldn't uh, say anything that would be contemptuous, but I would say things that may be not acceptable. So this afternoon, we are talking about the real mother, the real goddess, the real deity above all other deities. And we speak of it in our commitment, whether it be Friday night as a Muslim, Saturday night as a, as a, 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 a Jew, a Hebrew rather, and Sunday as a Christian. And in either case, in all three of these religions who have denied the birth of themselves, in all three of these religions you find the one in charge is primarily the African man. And in all three of these religions, the one who give birth to that African man is an African woman. Thus, I take the position that for me, I remember now in this particular case, I'm speaking for myself. For me, the deity is a woman whom I met. I met the woman who gave birth to me. I met her, I'm sure, the first day of birth, but I can't recall that. I can recall, however, at a very early age, having met this woman, that my consciousness, remember, feeding me, and feeding me through the matter of her breasts. She had 
two of them, and she was using the left breast, and I was lying comfortably back by her keeping me in the position and nursing me. I never had the misfortune of using Similac or any of those uh, the attributes I use, the milk of my mother. And uh, my mother never gave me milk once that you bought in the can or anything like that because she said if she intended to give me cow milk, she would have made sure that I was born from a cow. <laughs> but I was born from a woman, therefore I should have woman's milk. And since women don't have cow milk, then she fed me woman's milk. I've not been unfortunate like you would feel you have to have milk. And so you would go out and buy cow milk. When I need milk, I get me a woman and I nurse at her. <laughs> I don't go and get a cow. Because I don't think you see anything in the matter of a cow on me. Uh, we, don't, we don't relate together. So you may be mad with me for going and getting woman's milk, but I think that, that was the best. <clears throat> Some of you may think that it's even abominable to speak about woman's milk. That is because you have never had woman milk. Uh, you're born from a cow, so you went and got cow milk. I born from a woman, so I got woman milk when I want milk. All right, so since we understand each other, uh, first we have to make it clear. If you know any man who have given birth to a woman or a man or a child, then you can stop my discussion because I would not be telling the truth. I maintain that women give birth to every man and earth. And if someone knows somebody other than a man on earth, a man elsewhere, please state it now, and there will be no need for me to speak. I will continue since I don't think that there's anyone that crazy to get up and say that they know of anything other than the woman who have given birth to man and earth since we don't know of man anywhere else, then my position would be rational. You see, most of us have not had much of reading with respect to women other than in our slavery, in our colonialism, I should say, and which continues, we're the best dressed up slaves I've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, all of us uh, consider ourselves not slaves, and we will argue the point, then I said, since we're not slaves, let's act like it. And I don't think that you're willing to act like it, because you can't act like it, or the United States will show you by virtue of pulling out our armed forces. And I didn't, don't think that most of us, I, would, I wouldn't say all of us, most of us, I don't think would be ready for physical combat against the United States. We don't even plan it. We don't even think of it. We don't. It is a remote uh, uh, a concept in our mind that we will have to ever one day stand up against the United States. You ask, why don't we, why don't we ever challenge the system other than talking it? Because we're not ready for it. And that's why I listen to many statements and I listen and listen again and continue to listen because nothing is going to happen. As I said, I don't go to marches. I don't go to marches in front of embassies. I don't go to marches any of those places because when I go to a march of that nature, I don't expect returning to my home. I don't res expect anything because if I ever find myself there, I find myself with the equipment to get me to where I expect to go to the end. So I don't attend. And then many of my friends don't understand why, but I guess I explain it enough in my meetings with them. They just not paying any attention to me. I